And we are back to the TS's with Richard Sinray. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How about yourself today? Oh, too bad. Day five, final day of the boat show here in Virginia Key. Day five, ready to set this circus down. Absolutely. How's the show been for you guys? The show has been absolutely phenomenal. It uh, started off uh, really, really strong and got stronger through the week. So it's, it's been great. So the change of venue has really helped you guys. It, it has. Being able to have all of our boats in the water, not in the inside display. Boats always look better in the water. So being out here on the docks uh, really helps the folks see what the boat's going to look like when they get it home. Absolutely. And do you have people riding around boats outside just to test? We or? don't. We've got a couple of boats that we're uh, using with some of our suppliers, uh -huh. uh, but all of our boats were kind of dock locked in, the, in this place here. Uh, so they can actually see them here. Once they lock in their boat that they want, then they can go to their local dealer and do a sea trial. Your boat display is pretty big. How many boats do you have on display? Uh, we've got uh, about 27 boats on display here in it. Um, so everything to look at from 23 foot all the way to 40 feet. What's new for you right here? I mean, because uh, Sea Ray obviously does big and small boats like you just mentioned, but what's the latest and greatest that we can see? Latest here? and greatest, so we've got a number of different boats that you can come see here. We've got our new 320 Dancer. Right. Uh, so this is a brand new boat in the cruiser category that's really blending day boating and cruiser boating. Okay. Uh, so it actually expands the bow space, recesses the bow. You can actually access the bow on a cruiser while you're underway. Yeah. It's a phenomenal boat. And we also make it available in outboard power now. Because that's a change of direction for you, isn't it? Because I, I, you used to do a couple of boats in the outboard, but then it went away. So why is that now coming back? Yeah, absolutely. So outboard power, particularly in a saltwater environment, is great. You yeah. can get the drives up out of the water, hose them off, less maintenance. Uh, they're more efficient. You also get some uh, better performance out of them. So as the outboard market continues to grow and the technology gets better, the consumer acceptance gets better as well. I would take it we're not talking about sevens engines now on the back. Uh, absolutely not. You're talking about <laughs> motors that are uh, that are really really quiet. Uh, typically, you can't hear the engine running while you're sitting there at idle, and you don't even know they're running unless you're looking at the RPM. So yeah, we just did a few interviews with some of the engine guys. The mm -hmm. technology those guys have is phenomenal, really, these days. It's yeah, absolutely. You know, most people think when they think outboards they think an old vibrating puffin blue smoke off the back of a john boat and mm -hmm. outboard motors have come so far over the last few years again oftentimes they're quieter than stern drive versions both at idle and at running speeds okay i'm going to ask for your elevator pitch what makes sea ray a better buying option for your consumers rather than say any one of these others around here? So a couple of things. One, Sea Ray is one of the most storied brands in the marine business. Absolutely. Uh, so when you think of Sea Ray, you're thinking of an iconic brand. Mm -hmm. uh, next year we'll celebrate our 60th anniversary. So Good. we're a boat builder okay. that's been around for 60 years. Um, wow. The other thing is we're one of the most awarded brands in the business. We win more awards than any other brand. Right. Uh, the new 2018 SLX 400 was just named Boating Magazine's Boat of the Year. Got a great piece of hardware that's sitting on the aft over there. Mm -hmm. But even more than that, it's our dealers that really, that's where the consumer interaction happens. And yeah. we consistently have more dealers in the top 100 than any other brand. Uh, so you have the strength of, and the power of a 60 year old company. You've got a great innovative company that's always looking for ways to make your boating better. And then you've got the support of the greatest dealer network on the planet behind you to be able to support your boating experience. How do you make those dealers so supportive and so knowledgeable? Is it training and experience that you give them and giving them product that they can go and use yeah, as well? Absolutely, at the end of the day, we're a product company. You yeah. build product that people like and they're gonna come to you. Yeah. Then we make sure that we're working with our dealers both in their service departments and the front of their business to make sure that one, you're putting the right customer in the right boat, but two, you're also taking care of them after the sale because at the end of the day, you're not buying a boat, you're yeah. buying an experience, you're yeah. buying memories, you're investing in a lifetime of what did I do that summer? You're not investing in a boat. Absolutely. That's actually a very good point. What's your position here then, Rich? So I'm the Director of North American Sales for Sea Ray. Okay. Uh, so I'm uh, headquartered out of the Knoxville, Tennessee facility. How did you get involved in with Sea Ray? I mean, have you always been around boats? Or? I've always been a boater, so I grew up uh, skiing and water sports. Uh, so I've always been a boating and outdoors enthusiast. Uh, and about a year and a half ago, I was approached with an opportunity to come work with Sea Ray. Okay. Uh, again, uh, when you look at the nostalgia and the brand that is Sea Ray, how could you say no? Absolutely. So you grew up around boats and knew pretty much everything there was to know about. I did. Right? I'm a Florida native, uh, so I've spent as much time on the water as I have on the land. So, <laughs> Is that typical of all people from Florida? Uh, uh, most people from Florida. Because I live in Fort Lauderdale now and I've been here for 10 years. Just don't get out on the water that much. But You're in the wrong line of work. You spend too much time on a Yeti and not enough time on a boat. <laughs> that, that's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? Because these are live on boats, Absolutely. Right? <laughs> oh, boy. 
Oh, so you both built in Florida though, right? There are, there's like th two or three facilities? Is we that have right? multiple facilities. So our uh, manufacturing facility for our sport boats and sport cruisers is in Knoxville, Tennessee, right. a town called Venora, Tennessee on Teleco Lake. Beautiful boating. We also have two yacht facilities here in Florida where we build our sport yachts and yachts. So everything in our sport yacht and yacht category from 40 feet and above, built here in Florida. Uh, all of our sport boats, sport cruisers, built in Teleco. So, ah, perfect question for you. Absolutely. Do you have a sea ray? I do. I own a uh, one of our SLX 230 wake boats. Okay. It's our purpose-built surf boat. Uh, and uh, spend every waking moment I can when the water's not hard right. uh, out on the water <laughs> surfing. So it's so uh, you were a skier or a wakeboarder? Uh, I started out skiing, right. uh, got old and fat, and uh, it got hurt uh, when you fall down skiing. So yep. there's only one way to go down, and that's hard. Right. Uh, so I actually got out of it for a little while. Once we got into the surf boat, um, I got into surfing. Uh, so inland surfing, you're, Are you're only doing wake surfing. Wake surfing behind the boat uh, without the rope, though. Without right? the rope, uh, and you're going 10.6 miles an hour. I can fall all day at 10.6 and still get up and go to work the next day. Now that's an interesting question because I love wakeboarding as well. Mm -hmm. I've always thought you needed a dedicated wakeboard boat mm -hmm. to go wakeboarding. Is that true, or can your product now compete? You with do. The you do for a surf boat. So right. with a surf boat, you can't surf behind outboards or stern drives. You okay. have to have an inboard boat. Yeah. Uh, and you also need extra weight and ballast to make sure that you're creating that wake. Yeah. But you also need a surf system to be able to create the wave behind it. Uh, so we use an innovative surf sim system. Surf spin system. So you can surf left side or right side. Okay. Put about 2,000 pounds of ballast into the boat. Uh, we built our ballast tanks into the liner so we didn't just fat sack an existing boat. So you're talking about you can transfer the weight depending on which it side? It doesn't or? transfer the weight, it just transfers the wave. Uh, so we have a fin system below, so if you surf left, It'll dig down on the left-hand side. That's if you cool. right, it'll dig down on the right-hand side. How are you competing with the other guys that make those kind of boats So we're well? a little different. Uh, so they're dedicated tow sports guys. They build a boat that that's all that boat's designed Absolutely. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do it a little bit different. We build more of a hybrid boat. So we, we took our SLX DNA, our True Deep V runabout hull, and then designed a wake boat into it. And so what that does, that gives you ability to do the inland surfing, but it also gives you a great boat and chop gives you a great boat if you're doing a sunset cruise or a dinner cruise and you're not taking water over the bow because we use a very high freeboard just like we do with our standard SLX line. So you get all the joys and pleasure uh, and usability of a large runabout uh, but still be able to tow behind it. That's fantastic. And sails for this type of boat, is it not, it's not coastal areas that want this boat, it's more lakes and... It's generally your lakes and inland because you do need some depth and you want some pretty good water to be able to do it behind. How is your, uh, being a sales manager, how's mm -hmm. your international sales? Because growing up, my father always wanted an 18, 20 foot Sea Ray bow mm -hmm. rider. Yep. Do you sell a lot out internationally now or is it mainly in the US? No, we do. We, uh, our international business continues to grow every year, uh, so much so that we do have a plant in Poland as well. Uh, Didn't know that. We actually build boats uh, outside of the country for our European market. We still export quite a few boats mm -hmm. uh, into the Caribbean, Mexico, other parts of the world out of our Teleco facility, mm -hmm. but we do have a plant uh, in Poland. And what do they normally build? Is it more the cruisers for the European market or do they want smaller sport boats? Uh, they're building a little bit of both. Uh, okay. So they build some, uh, and some of it's modified for given markets. So they actually build some models in Europe that we don't build here in the States because their boating is oftentimes different. Their lifestyles are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, so in turn, their boating is going to be a little bit different. Different. So while a lot of the boats are very similar, mm -hmm. there are some variants that uh, we build in Europe that we don't build here. So being from Europe, I know some of the differences, but what kind of differences in boating styles do they like in Europe over than America? Sure. I know in America, I've spoken to a lot of people, it's relaxation, vacation, mm -hmm. drinking, five o'clock somewhere. Kind yeah, of thing. Absolutely. So yeah. we do more diesel power in Europe uh, than we do here in the States, okay. just for the availability of fuel. Uh, but we also build a boat over there called the Sunsport, which actually has a covered bow. So it's more of a uh, more of a cuddy cabin, if you will, for that lifestyle there. Uh, and it's sure you don't need air conditioning. Absolutely, <laughs> and uh, and they're typically less concerned about the performance aspect of it uh, than we are here in the states. So they're more about the function and the form uh, versus just necessarily the performance. Gotcha. And boat numbers. What are you up to per year? Are you still one of the highest output manufacturers in the world? We are. We're one of the largest manufacturers in the world. We continue to grow in every segment that we compete in. Uh, and business is really, really good here at Sea Ray. How are you finding, we're not going to get political, sure. we try and avoid that, uh, but since the downturn in 2008, how has the market responded, and especially with Hurricane Irma that we just had through, how has production really, people looking for more boats, is business generally increasing? Yeah, absolutely. We continue to see every year the market is continuing to grow from the downturn mm -hmm. in the 2008-2009 era. Yep. So, the con so the business continues to grow, gets better every year. Uh, one of the things that we're also finding is the 
price point of the boats are continuing to grow. Okay. So not only are they coming back to the market, but they expect more when they come back to the market. So the consumer expectations have grown. Uh, they want more electronics. They want to make sure that the boat's easier to use. Um, so when you look at some of the technology that we put in the boats, a lot of the boats that we build now, you can get joystick uh, controls. Right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Where it makes the boat super easy at low speeds and coming in and out of the docks. Yeah. Because consumers want to make their boating experience easier. Yeah. They don't want to worry about twin throttles and all these different things that you have to do to be a salty old sea captain. They just want to go out and have fun and make memories with their family. Absolutely. Do you, is there a specific thing per year that people start to ask for? Like one of my broker friends said 10 years ago it was all about speed. How fast can mm -hmm. I go? This year, it's all about extra cabins that so can have an extra guest, guest room. Is that the same kind of thing with what you see? Right now, we're seeing two big trends in the industry. One is that gravitation back to outboard power, mm -hmm. but the other is the size of day boats. People are less concerned about the cabin space and more concerned about the space up top. So you'll see a number of the boats that we brought to market in the last two years are really maximizing the social space on the top of the deck right. and less concerned about the cabin. Still great cabins, still cabins that you can sleep adults mm -hmm. comfortably. But the consumer feedback is, I bought a cabin cruiser because I'm going to spend every weekend on it. Yep. And what they find is they seldom spend the weekend on it. Correct. They spend all their time up top. Uh, so we've done some unique things to where we push the galleys up top. Uh, we pushed all of the creature comforts up top because you don't want to be downstairs getting lunch together well, when all your is... friends and family are up, upstairs having a good time. Do you feel that Sea Ray leads the market in these kind of design trends and everyone else seems to follow what you guys do? Absolutely. We are the most awarded brand uh, in the business. We receive more awards each and every year than other, any other brand. Uh, and again, we've got the hardware on the back of the SLX 400 to prove it as Boating Magazine's Boat of the Year. Absolutely. I mean, some of the stuff you have here is absolutely fantastic. And price point wise, where would you say you are in the brand mix? In, I mean, in this space here, so our SLX, I'm sorry, our SPX 19 is our entry level 19 foot boat, mm -hmm. big boat feel, uh, small boat price. You can get into it about $35,000. Wow. And you can okay. come all the way up to our SLX 400 in outboard power uh, with everything you can possibly imagine on the boat for right around $700,000. Because Sea Ray definitely has the strongest brand that I've ever seen in the, in the boating industry. Does that help with resale value as well? Oh, absolutely. So, so people come back and say, I'd like that, but I've got a Sea Ray, but you can trade it quite easily because you know you're going to sell it. Absolutely. That, that was one of the unique things when, when I came to Sea Ray is everybody's got a Sea Ray story. Yeah. Granddad had a Sea Ray. I remember being on my uncle's Sea Ray. My first boat I was ever on was a Sea Everybody's got a Sea Ray story. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a storied brand. It's a 60-year-old history. Uh, started right here in the States uh, by a gentleman named uh, C.N. Ray, Connie right. Ray. Uh -huh. uh, just out uh, in Michigan, uh, started the company, and uh, from there, it's, it's one of those great brands that continue to grow. And then when did Brunswick buy the company? Brunswick bought it, I believe, it was '86. I believe that Brunswick okay, bought it. Okay, in the '80s. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Been going strength to strength ever since. It's been going great. Again, uh, our our biggest problem right now is uh, building the hot boats fast enough. I heard that's quite a big problem, especially up, like I said after the hurricane. Mm -hmm. Everyone, a lot of people lost some boats, yep. so now it's just a. Uh, race to catch up. They did. And, and building boats, the bigger they get, the more complicated they get. Mm -hmm. So it's really more like building a house than it is manufacturing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've got your plumbers, your electricians, your carpenters, you know, you've got all of those people that are working together uh, to try to bring this uh, this dream together for the guy that's waiting at the other end. So the, so the end, to finish, it's really for customers coming on. This is an investment rather as well as a toy. Right. Yeah, yeah and, and really what you're in, see, somebody just invested right there. So they just uh, well done, popped them some champagne and uh, <laughs> rang the bell. But, you know, you're really not investing in a boat, you're investing in memories. Yep. And as corny and as goofy as that sounds, it really is. I can remember growing up on the lake and always, all I could wait was for the weekend to come there so we could go skiing. Yeah. My kids now, they're, they're just waiting for the weather to turn just right so we can put the boat back in the water and be surfing again. Uh, they absolutely love it. And, and it's a time that you're not on cell phones and you're not on iPads mm -hmm. and you're not glued to a TV, you're glued to the great outdoors and you're spending time with family and it's a very social event. Yeah, it's great. Well, Rich, thank you very much for your time. You've been wonderful source of information. Zach, it's a pleasure talking to you. And you as well.